Hey everyone, and welcome back to the WellBe Podcast. This podcast is designed to help you learn, expand what you thought was possible, and become as empowered as you can be in your health. Today's episode is an in-depth guide to contraception, the best kinds to use for your short and long-term health, what the health risks of different kinds of contraception are, and which ones are the most effective for preventing pregnancy. Real quick before we jump in, it's October, which is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and we now know a tremendous amount about how to prevent breast cancer. One of the main risk factors is exposure to endocrine, or hormone-disrupting chemicals, and synthetic hormones through our products, food, water, and air. The WellBe Spark Health program was designed specifically to take you through a six-week or six-module process to detoxify your home and daily habits. Included in the program is a year of access to our notable non-toxic product database, valued at $97. It's a pretty good deal, if I say so myself. To bring awareness to the connection between cancer prevention and hormone-disrupting chemicals, we are running a 33% off sale, or $100 off, the Spark Health program in the month of October. You can head to getwellbe.com to find the program and use code OCTOBERSALE to get in on this sale. All right, now let's jump into something you may not realize contributes to your breast cancer risk, among other female cancers and chronic conditions, and that is hormonal contraception. There are a dizzying array of options when it comes to contraception, but more and more we're realizing that many come with downsides for your health, especially the hormonal options, as I just said. At the same time, getting pregnant is something you want to be ready for when it happens, if you want it to happen at all. And with the overturn of Roe vs. Wade, contraception has become even more important and demand has gone way up. We made it our mission to help you find the best birth control with the least side effects and put it all in this episode. There are a number of factors to consider when it comes to the best birth control with the least side effects. Analyzing all of the different options, you would look at how effective it is to prevent pregnancy, how convenient it is, the short-term side effects, the long-term side effects, the potential benefits. Of course, each birth control option has its own enthusiastic fans and detractors. After all, we all have different bodies, medical histories, sensitivities, and lifestyles. We also have our own risk profiles for getting pregnant. I've ranked the contraception options from most side effects to least, in my view, but remember that ultimately it's all about finding what works for you. Before I get into your specific birth control options, it's important to understand that all methods of birth control fall into one of two categories, hormonal and non-hormonal. Most contraceptive methods are hormonal, so many millions of American women are taking synthetic hormones in one form or another. Hormonal contraception can be very effective at preventing pregnancy, but taking these hormones does carry risks that we want to point out. I'll get into the specific risks of each birth control option today, but for now, we'll just give a broad overview to help you understand how hormonal contraceptives impact your health. In the short term, there are a number of potential unpleasant side effects with hormonal contraception, such as headaches, nausea, sore breasts, vaginal yeast infections, spotting between periods, and reduced libido. Because synthetic hormones mess up your body's natural balance of hormones, and because hormones are so essential to the overall functioning of your body, there are also some more serious risks, including thrombosis, also known as blood clots. This risk is higher in women over 40 and those who are overweight or smoke. Then there's breast cancer, which I mentioned, especially in younger women, so those under 35. Then there's reduced bone strength. There's heart attack. This risk is higher in women over 35 and those who smoke. And then stroke. This risk is rare, but it does exist and is more pronounced in women who get migraines. What's more, any sort of hormonal contraception should be completely avoided by women with certain conditions. Those conditions include blood clotting disorders, high blood pressure, diabetes, headaches with neurological symptoms, heart disease, and a history of stroke or breast cancer. Ultimately, we believe the best way to give your body what it needs is to be in tune with it. When you put synthetic hormones in your body and disrupt your natural cycle, you eliminate the possibility of being in tune with your body and being able to read its cries for help. All right, so let's evaluate the options. 
I have eight for you, the first of which is the sponge. Made famous by Seinfeld, the sponge is a soft foam disc that's inserted into the vagina before sex and removed afterward. It also contains spermicide, so it blocks as well as kills sperm. The sponge has a number of benefits that make it a super convenient form of contraception. It doesn't require prescription or fitting, it protects against pregnancy for a full 24 hours, and it doesn't require a partner's cooperation. However, there are a lot of side effects which may outweigh the convenience factor. The sponge can cause vaginal irritation or dryness, increase your risk of contracting a UTI, and even put you at risk for toxic shock syndrome, which is a rare life-threatening complication of some bacterial infections. Some people are sensitive to the spermicide in the sponge because, let's face it, spermicide is meant to kill living organisms, and the chemical used in spermicide, which is non-oxynol-9, can cause changes to the vaginal microbiome. Additionally, if the sponge causes irritation, it's not only painful, but it can also increase your risk of HIV and other STDs. Another big drawback of the sponge is that it's hard to use correctly and thus has a very high failure rate. Among women who have never had a baby, 12% will get pregnant within one year of using the sponge. And among women who have given birth before, that number rises to 24%, which is almost a quarter. All right, so the second option, the most famous, is birth control pills. The pill is the most common form of birth control, with nearly 11 million American women choosing it as their form of contraception. Most of the side effects you hear about are short-term things like headaches, breast tenderness, nausea, or fatigue. Some women also experience spotting between periods, bloating, weight gain, lightheadedness, acne, or mood changes. Many women need to try a few different pills before they find one that doesn't have those side effects or at least one with side effects they can handle, I guess, if you can handle side effects. Lots of women give up on the birth control pill altogether because the side effects are too intense. There's less conclusive research on the long-term side effects of birth control pills. After all, it's only been around a few decades, but there's enough out there to make us pretty concerned about being on the pill indefinitely or at all. This is because the birth control pills alter the natural hormone levels of your body, which is a pretty big deal, since hormonal imbalance can cause a cascade of health issues. So what are the potential long-term side effects of the birth control pill? Let's start off with hormones. Oral contraceptives essentially act like a testosterone sponge. So they lower your testosterone levels, which can have a negative impact on your libido, which sort of defeats the main purpose of birth control, no? Essentially, the pill makes your body believe it's pregnant when it's not, thus preventing you from getting pregnant. It also creates a quote-unquote fake period, which means the very important process of having a monthly period is now being taken away. Taking the pill and creating a fake period also means that if something goes wrong in your body that causes your period to stop, you wouldn't know. When your body stops menstruating at any age when it should be, roughly 12 to 51 years old, it's a cry for help a symptom of an underlying issue. Taking the birth control pill stifles those cries. Long-term use of the pill can also deplete your levels of certain vital nutrients, including vitamin C, B vitamins, folate, magnesium, selenium, and zinc. Crohn's disease is another one of the surprising long-term side effects of the birth control pill since the pill has an impact on your gut permeability. The pill can also increase your risk of inflammation as well as blood clots, according to this research, only if you're over 35, but we would suspect your risk would increase at any age. Then there's cancer. We can't say there's a definitive link between oral contraception and cancer because all of the studies on the issue have been observational versus a control study, meaning that there may be additional factors to account for the results, i.e. women who take birth control pills tend to have lifestyle or genetic or other factors that could increase their cancer risk. However, there's a growing and consistent body of evidence showing that oral contraception increases risk of both breast cancer and cervical cancer. One study of over 150,000 women showed that women who were currently using oral contraceptives had a 24% increase in risk of breast cancer, and women who had ever used oral contraceptives but were not currently had a 7% increased risk compared to those who had never taken them. After 10 years without oral contraceptives, the increased risk disappeared. Another study found that the risk of cervical cancer continues to rise the longer you take the pill. 10% increased risk after 5 years, 60% after 5 to 9 years, 
and 100%, aka double the risk with 10 or more years. The American Cancer Society has also stated that women who take birth control pills are more likely to develop both breast cancer and cervical cancer than those who don't. With both cancers, the risk increases the longer you take the pill. Confusingly, there's also research suggesting that the pill can actually decrease your risk of other cancers like ovarian, endometrial, and colorectal cancer. For colorectal cancer, oral contraception is associated with a 15-20% to lower risk. With ovarian, risk is lowered by 30-50%, to and with endometrial, risk is reduced by 30%. These findings could definitely be considered a silver lining, but in my view, they're offset by the potential increased risk for other cancers. If you're considering going on the birth control pill, look at your own family history of cancers and make an informed decision, and also think about how much you want the other side effects and risks I mentioned besides cancer. We'll be right back with the other contraception options after this quick message. I don't know about you, but I never listen to the end of a podcast, so I'm hopping in here to let you know that the best way to stay empowered and on top of your health is to be in the WellBe community. So head to getwellbe.com slash subscribe to make sure you're in like Flynn. On getwellbe.com, you'll learn about our online programs to help you go deeper and make life-altering changes to your health and our awesome non-toxic product database. If you're more of a social media person, let's be friends on Instagram. Find me at GetWellBe. Okay, now back to the other contraception options. The third option is the hormonal patch. The patch is an adhesive contraceptive that sticks onto your skin and delivers the hormones progestin, which is the synthetic form of progesterone, and estrogen into your bloodstream. You can place the patch on your upper arm, lower abdomen, or butt. Because the hormones in the patch are the same hormones in oral contraceptives, the list of potential short-term side effects are largely similar. Headaches, weight gain, bloating, tender breasts, impacted libido. Again, these side effects don't happen to everyone who uses the patch, and some women might only experience side effects temporarily. But the same issues we discussed with the hormonal pill apply to the hormonal patch. Like the pill, the patch has a shorter list, but more serious list, and much more rare list of side effects. These include things like increased risk for blood clots, heart attack, stroke, and liver tumors. The fourth option is hormonal IUDs. An IUD, or intrauterine device, is a T-shaped device that's inserted into the uterus. There are two FDA-approved types, one of which is made of copper that doesn't emit any hormones, and one is a synthetic device that emits a small level of the hormone progestin. For the hormonal IUD, there are many of the same side effects you see with the pill and the patch, such as weight gain, hair loss, mood changes, and acne. But since the dose of progesterone in the IUD is only 20% of the dose of progesterone in the birth control pill and the patch, these side effects are less common and less intense. In the plus column for hormonal IUDs, they're super effective for not getting pregnant, 99%. They last for anywhere from 3 to 10 years, and they can apparently reduce your risk of endometrial cancer. Sadly, there are risks linked to a variety of other cancers and diseases, including breast cancer and cervical cancer. Fifth is the copper IUD. The non-hormonal copper IUD uses copper wire to create an inflammatory reaction that is toxic to sperm and eggs. Yikes. Because it doesn't contain any hormones, it doesn't have any of the side effects of the hormonal IUD, but is just as effective in preventing pregnancy. It has the added benefit of being effective as emergency contraception. It can actually prevent pregnancy if it's inserted within five days after having unprotected sex. The copper IUD does, however, have a few side effects not related to hormones that concern us. It can be pretty painful upon insertion and cause cramps and backaches for a few days after. It can also lead to bleeding between periods, cramps, and severe menstrual pain, but these side effects apparently go away within three to six months of insertion. Three to six months, though, is a pretty long time. The same issue with hormonal IUDs exists with copper IUDs, namely that you're putting a foreign object inside your body which your body is, of course, going to fight like hell to get out of your body. That's your body's job. This often leads to localized inflammation, which can then lead to chronic inflammation since the object your body is trying to remove isn't going anywhere. 
chronic inflammation can cause a whole host of diseases, including heart disease, diabetes, and cancer. For both types of IUDs, there's a very slight chance of serious complications. About 1% of women get pelvic inflammatory disease after getting an IUD, which is a bacterial infection that requires antibiotics, which of course, you want to avoid at all costs. This kind of infection can leave scar tissue that blocks the fallopian tubes and causes future infertility. In rare cases, but actually, I know somebody who had this happen just recently, the IUD can actually move out of place, pushing through the wall of the uterus, ow, and causing perforations or holes inside your body. According to research, in about one of every 1,000 insertions, the IUD punctures the uterine wall and makes its way into the abnormal cavity, where it can perforate organs like the intestines or enter the urinary tract. So, so scary. The risk of your IUD moving around is higher if you're under 20, if you're breastfeeding, if you have a tilted uterus, or you get strong cramps during your period. The sixth option is non-toxic condoms. It might seem obvious that condoms are the best birth control with the least side effects. After all, they're just a physical barrier and they don't stay inside you long term. So how could they have any impact on your health? That's mostly true, but certain kinds can. In fact, many condoms on the market today contain the known carcinogen, i.e. cancer-causing substance, nitrosamine, which is pretty terrifying when you consider the sensitive and permeable place they're going. Conventional condoms can also cause skin irritation due to latex sensitivity or allergic reactions caused by the spermicides, fragrance, lubricant, or other chemicals used in condoms. The good news is that there's now an increasing number of non-toxic condom brands out there. These organic, vegan options don't contain any harmful chemicals or potential skin irritants. However, they do have the one side effect that all condoms have, which is a higher failure rate. While condoms are 98% effective when used perfectly, human error means that they're actually only 85% effective in real life. Again, our recommendation is to understand what is most important to you and whether you can use this birth control effectively. Non-toxic condoms are one of the best forms of birth control for your health, but of course they have to be used every time you have sex and put on properly for them to be effective ways of preventing pregnancy. Sustain Naturals and Lola are two non-toxic brands that I know of that are good. Remember that your health is more important than how it might feel or how convenient it might be for your partner. Take a firm stance and explain the importance of using this birth control method for your short and long-term health. And you may be surprised how well your partner responds and complies. The seventh option is the natural family planning app. Ovulation trackers have been around for a while, but it wasn't until recently that a natural family planning app was actually approved by the FDA for use as a form of contraception. This is a pretty big deal since the FDA requires drugs and medical devices to go through a lot of hoops to get approval. The fact that an app could be approved is pretty new and remarkable. The app is called Natural Cycles, and it pairs with a thermometer to track a woman's temperature every day and uses that data to predict when she'll ovulate. Based on that prediction, the app will tell women whether or not it's okay to have unprotected sex. The potential benefits of this app are pretty obvious. It doesn't require you to put anything in or on your body. It uses no synthetic hormones or chemicals, and it won't cause you any sort of pain or require a medical procedure. However, if a side effect free natural family planning app seems too good to be true, that's because it might be. While the app claims that it's 93% effective with standard use and 98% effective with perfect use, There's been a major backlash of women who ended up with unwanted pregnancies after trusting the app's predictions. It's also important to note that the app does not protect against STDs, so it's best to only use it when you're in a committed, long-term relationship and after your partner has been tested for STDs. The natural family planning app option is still super new, and it might improve with advancements in technology. Our recommendation here is, again, to know yourself. Will you be able to use something like this perfectly? And how much do you not want to be pregnant? How important is it to you to use a side effect-free and natural birth control method? Once you've answered these questions, you'll know if this is a good option for you. 
One good hybrid option that is best for your health but also boosts the effectiveness of the app for preventing pregnancy is using a non-toxic condom during sex around any of the times the app indicates are medium fertility versus only abstaining or using a condom during times the app indicates are high fertility. Another way to further improve the effectiveness of the app is to use the pullout method, which I'll get into in a second, at times of low fertility and non-toxic condoms at times of medium or high fertility, allowing no semen to enter your body, which is a pretty good way of making sure you don't get pregnant. The eighth and final option, which I just mentioned, is known as the pullout method. Believe it or not, the pullout method, when done correctly, is 96% effective at preventing pregnancy. But so few do it correctly, so in actuality, it's only 78% effective. It's worth it to perfect your technique, however, because similar to the Natural Cycles app, it has no negative side effects for your health. The pullout method doesn't require you to put anything on or in your body, it uses no synthetic hormones or chemicals, and it won't cause you any sort of pain or require a medical procedure. However, similar to the Natural Cycles app, IUDs, and hormonal birth control, the pullout method does not protect against STDs, so it's best to only use it when in a committed, long-term relationship and after your partner has been tested for STDs. As I mentioned before, you can improve the pullout method's effectiveness by pairing it with the Natural Cycles app and either abstaining or using non-toxic condoms during times of medium or high fertility. So that's all for this episode. I hope you now have a better sense of the different contraception options and what they do to your short and long-term health, as well as how well they protect against pregnancy and some ways to make certain more natural options more effective. Remember the basic concepts here are that there are really only two kinds of contraception, hormonal and non-hormonal. And of course, the very best way to protect yourself against STDs is to abstain from sex or use non-toxic condoms because there's actually a physical barrier there. As far as pregnancy and your health, you really want to think about the fact that your period is a wonderful report card every month that lets you know how you're doing as far as your health. So when you take away your body's ability to give you those messages, you're creating the potential for a lot of other health issues. To read the written version of this episode with plenty of research links and links to better non-toxic condom brands and the Natural Cycles app, head to getwellby.com or check out the link in the show notes. And while you're there, don't forget about the awesome sale we're putting on in October for Breast Cancer Awareness Month on the Spark Health Program. Head to getwellby.com and use code OCTOBERSALE to get 33% off the program or $100 off and get those dangerous toxins out of your daily life and your home ASAP. If you haven't already and found this episode helpful or interesting, subscribe to the podcast. This way you'll never miss a new episode and they'll be delivered to you whenever we publish a new one. And please share this episode with family or friends who you think might find it valuable and informative. It means a lot and helps more people find the podcast. And if you love the WellBe podcast, please leave a quick review. It means so much to me and it goes a long way with helping more people find the podcast. This is your host, Adrienne Nolan-Smith, and thanks again for listening to the WellBe Podcast.